Howdy folks, do hope you're all having a good one. Welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Where today, Sig Shellback in the USS Kid, here on the Two Brothers map, is going to be undertaking a carry of truly legendary proportions. The new graphics update has hit, of course. World of Warships once again being carried, kicking and screaming by the art department, they really have done their usual fantastic job. The water effects are amazing. The map itself has been overhauled and looks very, very nice. Anyway, the USS Kid. It's a Tier 8 Premium, and it's a version of the Fletcher, which is of course a Tier 9 destroyer. The Kid boasts enhanced anti-aircraft firepower and can equip the defensive fire consumable. However, that enhanced anti-aircraft firepower comes at the price of one of the KID's torpedo launchers. It only has one, it has a fairly long reload. Honestly, I'm not sure it's worth the trade. These are the Fletcher's stop torpedoes. They're very slow, with a speed of 55 knots, but they do have a range of 9.2 kilometers. They're decent torpedoes, but just one launcher. Which means if you're looking for a destroyer with high burst damage potential, the kid is probably not it, not with just one launcher. If you're looking for a scary comparison, you could think of the kid as having the same torpedo loadout as an upgraded Benson. And the Benson is not known for having a scary torpedo loadout. And the Benson has two of them, and the kid only has the one. She is very stealthy though. Sig Shellbacks managed to get the stealth down to 5.8 kilometers, and she's a little bit faster than the ship upon which she's based, the Fletcher, with a top speed of 38 knots. The main selling point of the Kid isn't the anti-aircraft firepower, however, although in a game with an aircraft carrier that's obviously going to be quite welcome. It's the fact that this is the only American destroyer in the game that has access to the repair party tool. So that's nice. And trust me, he's going to need it. Well anyway, He's dropped a sneaky smoke screen covering the inner boundary of the capture circle up here. However, I think he's going to come to regret his decision to loiter outside the smoke screen in order to get a couple of shots off at the USS Flint over there before backing into it, because the Flint is an utter nightmare if you're in a destroyer. Look at all of the health he lost. The problem here, of course, isn't just the flint, it's the fact that he was the one spotting the flint, and you can't spot from inside a smokescreen. I think the better choice here would have been to simply sit outside the smokescreen, using the smokescreen as a torpedo magnet, because the flint does have Benson torpedoes, and spot targets for the team. Get the team to drive them off, rather than giving his position away by taking some shots at the flint, which missed anyway. Of course, now that he's been forced to hide in his smokescreen, he can't see any torpedoes coming. Although he should be reasonably safe, because I'm pretty sure the flint was outside of Benson torpedo launch range, and there are no enemy destroyers over here in this cap circle. He's the only one in it. Nobody else is contesting the cap, so he's going to be able to take the cap without too many problems, and he might even be able to get a torpedo hit. No, the Miyoko's seen them. He's reversing. Yep, the torpedoes are going to miss. That's a shame. On the bright side, the rest of his team now have line of sight, mostly, so he is able to at least take advantage of this excellent long duration American smokescreen to put the guns to work. And the guns are pretty good. I mean, this is no Kitakaze, but they're basically Fletcher guns, and the Fletcher's guns aren't bad. Well, anyway, he's fulfilled his main objective, he's taken the cap circle. The team now have two, and they're flipping a third. In fact, they have flipped a third, so this is a good start. They're starting to creep ahead on points. He no longer needs to sit on the smokescreen, tempting both fate and torpedoes. So he's beating a fighting retreat here, using the rear turrets to harass enemy ships, just in case they get any funny ideas about taking that cap circle. There is a carrier in play here, by the way, but it is only tier 6, a Ryuzhou. And the kid's aircraft defences are pretty formidable, and he does, of course, have access to that defensive bomb consumable with five charges. What the hell is that Amagi doing? I mean, he, he is aware that the rest of his team have all turned tail and are running in the other direction, right? Because he's running straight into, well, everything. Two North Carolinas, an aircraft carrier... 
a kid, an Indrach. I mean, whoa, what the hell? Well, there's deep water torpedoes. The enemy team having a Sashio. He must be on this flank. I'm not entirely sure who those torpedoes were aimed at because they can't hit cruisers or destroyers. He fired them right past the Eendracht and Sig then again they're probably just aimed at the two North Carolinas on the other side. Fortunately, they got spotted. So the North Carolinas have no excuse for getting hit by any of those. Sig Shellback gets his torpedoes away. They are really slow. I mean 55 knots. It's not the worst but it's far from the best. He's going to have to be... Well, he's not going to have to be that careful, because the Asashio can't torpedo him. We just saw the torpedoes pass harmlessly underneath. And while the Asashio's guns do hit hard, they don't hit very often. And the Asashio's probably not going to want to shoot and get spotted anyway. However, better safe than sorry. Pops his smoke again, in order to start farming this Caracciolo. Wouldn't do to get shot at by the Asashio as well. Oh, and the torpedoes have sunk the Amaki. <laughs> so, that was nice. I mean, the Amaki was doomed anyway, rushing in unsupported like that. Um, probably the same case here with the Caraccio, but it's nice to be the one to get a kill and do the damage. The torpedoes there behind him, not quite sure who those are from. The Caracciolo is basically repeating exactly the same mistake that the Amaki just did. And that's absolutely fine. It's all free damage. Oh, the Asashio just managed to get himself spotted. Well, that was careless of him. Not quite sure how, unless he was firing the guns at something. I mean, Sig Shellback was within spotting distance, but inside a smokescreen, so he wasn't the one who spotted him. Notice how as the Caracciolo gets closer, he starts carefully working his way back into the cover of the island over here. He's outside of the smokescreen. And he's doing this because he only wants to fight one ship at a time. At least I'm pretty sure this was the theory, although he has slightly overdone it, because he can't shoot at the Caracciolo from here. Then again, nobody on the enemy team can shoot at him from here, so it's not all bad. Is he waiting for his torpedoes to come? I think he's probably just waiting for his torpedoes to come off cooldown. Again, he has to wait. Well, he doesn't have to wait, they're ready. The smoke is still going to be up for a few seconds, but he's going to get spotted as he crosses this gap. Or is he? Yes, he is. And he is being targeted. But he should be able to get the torpedoes away, duck back into cover behind the smoke, that's exactly what he's done, and then open the distance so that when the smoke dissipates and there's a clear line of sight, he's no longer inside. Well, he's, he's not going to be inside spotting range because there's not going to be anything alive to spot him. <laughs> Kill number two. Wait, does anybody else on the enemy team want to try pushing their luck like that? Oh wait, there is somebody in the camp. It's being flipped. That's got to be the Asashio. I mean, there's a Miyoko and a Leander over there, but they're not inside the cap circle. And they're not going to want to push into the cap circle with two North Carolinas, a Graf Spee and a kid over here, backed up by a carrier. Well, actually, the Miyoko is going to do exactly that, but... Whoa, hang on a second. How does this Asashio keep getting himself spotted? And why is the Miyoko doing what the Amagi and the Caracciolo did and not shooting at Sig Shellback while he's doing it? I don't understand. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The Asashio fired up his engine boost in his haste to get the hell out of there. And he is doing the smart thing by not shooting and extending his visibility range. Running into the island, however, was probably not part of his plan. Now at this point, while we're laughing at the misfortune of the Asashio over there and wondering why the Miyoko is determined to suicide into the same trap that just killed two of his team's battleships, take a quick look at the team list. Because a couple of seconds ago, Sig Shellback's team still had eight ships alive. And now they're down to five. And now they're down to three. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a team collapse as quickly as this. This is actually pretty remarkable. But hey, on the bright side, they do still have two of the ca Oh, wait, no. They only have one. This one, the last cap, is being flipped. Oh, well, never mind. So, there's quite some carrying to be done here. We're going to start with the Miyoko. Miyoko's dumped his torpedoes. I think we just caught sight of the Leander's torpedoes there as well. None of them were any threat. Although the Leander itself is going to be a threat. And here comes the carrier, and yep, there's a rocket strike. 
before you get a bit carried away, yes, it is just a tier 6 carrier. Yes, it did manage to get through. Yes, he has managed to sink the Miyoko, but, well, there was so much going on, he wasn't even aware that the carrier's rocket attack planes were coming in. So he had no reinforced sector up, and his defensive fire wasn't up. I mean, he's triggered absolutely everything now, of course. It's full hands to panic stations, and it, well, should be, because this Leander might kill him. In fact, if the kid didn't have a heal, the Leander would have killed him. Fortunately, the torpedoes get him. There's the Kraken Unleashed award. <laughs> the torpedoes got him before the Leander's guns could overwhelm the capacity of his repair party. And it looks like he's, well, he might not live because the carrier is coming back. Dive bombers this time. And everything is on cooldown. And he only has 1300 health left. Fortunately, the Ryuja is going for the Graf's B instead. Interesting choice. Pretty sure Sig Shellback is not complaining, however. So it's three against four. Okay. The enemy team do have three of the four cap circles, but this is not insurmountable odds. If the carrier and the Graf B can just, you know, at least kill something, this should still be doable. However, with three cap circles down, somebody's going to have to start flipping them back. And quite clearly that's going to have to be Sig Shellback. Because the rest of the enemy team all appear to be up to the north, with the exception, obviously, of the carrier, who is coming back. With his rocket attack planes this time. Okay. Everything's still on cooldown, but he can at least select a priority sector. Sadly, while the kid's AA is pretty impressive, and that is just a tier 6 carrier, with the beating that he's taken and... Oh, shit! <laughs> He just got smacked down to 82 health before his heel kicked in there. And he's probably lost most of his anti-aircraft guns with the beating that he's taken thus far in this battle. So, yeah. You see, this is why I question how valuable that increased AA is in the kid when it comes at the price of a torpedo launcher. Because here he has defensive fire up. And it is just a tier 6 carrier. But he's not stopping any of these strikes coming in. No amount of AA ever stops the strike from coming in. All it does is reduce the number of strikes from each launch. The Ryuja is only getting the one strike off because he's losing aircraft and because he's launching with depleted squadrons. But even against the kids' anti-aircraft firepower, those depleted squadrons are still getting their first strike through. This is why I worry about the Russian carriers as well, because they're balanced around only getting one strike off. Oh, he's hit him again. <laughs> well, of course he has. Because AA is meaningless, even on a ship specifically designed for it. While we're having a good whinge about anti-aircraft firepower, or the lack of it, the Graf B managed to die without sinking anything. As has the friendly carrier, who just stayed in the same spot when he saw the entire enemy team sailing towards him instead of running south like Sig Shellback did. So, Sig Shellback still being focused. I mean, obviously he's being focused by the carrier because he's the only thing left for the carrier to focus and he's also the biggest threat to the carrier. Wait a minute. Why is the Ryuja reversing towards him? <laughs> I mean, alright, the Fletcher's quite fast by American destroyer standards. It'll, sorry, did I say Fletcher? Based on the Fletcher, the Kid is quite fast by American destroyer standards with a top speed of 38 knots. But the Ryuja's not exactly slow either. It could have easily gotten away. What is it with carrier players? Seriously, they either stay in the same spot and just wait to die, or they rush headlong towards the enemy. I just don't get it. I mean, Sig Shellback isn't complaining, the carrier was obviously the biggest threat, and even though the carrier is dead, he remains the biggest threat, because of course his aircraft is still up. But with the carrier gone, and his aircraft now shot down, he does actually have a chance. I mean, it's a very slim chance but he no longer has to worry about being constantly spotted. Now, of course, all he has to worry about is being outnumbered 3 to 1, 
with the enemy team flipping the caps because I'm pretty sure that they're basically playing chasey chasey catchy catchy kissy kissy around the two central islands here or sailing around clockwise. Oh, let me just take this opportunity to point out what an absolute gentleman Sig Shellback is. Somebody on the enemy team there is saying, six kills, wow, too bad, your team sucked. And he could be totally forgiven for at the very least agreeing with that sentiment, because let's face it, his team really did kind of suck, but no, what he instead says in chat is, they did what they could. What an absolute gentleman. I don't think anybody would have blamed him if at the very least he'd agreed with the sentiment expressed by the enemy team player, and I'm fairly sure that most of us would have said an awful lot worse, but no, he kept it classy. That's very rare and very nice to see. I thought, oh and this could be bad actually, because I was under the impression that the enemy team were just chasing him clockwise around the islands, sweeping up the caps behind him as they came, but they're not, which might mean that one of them has either turned around and is coming the other way, one or more of them, or somebody is sailing up the middle. Wait, no, somebody, at least one person is flipping the southern cap, so somebody is chasing him around. Torpedoes, get ahead. Oh, torpedoes. And judging by the spread, that's the submarine. That is not good news. Oh, there he is. Looks like they both spotted each other at exactly the same time. Here's the thing though, if you thought fighting aircraft carriers was frustrating because they can basically strike you whenever they want, spot you whenever they want and there's nothing you can do about it because they're on the other side of the map, you can't see them so you can't shoot back at them, Wargaming seemed to have a bit of a hold my beer moment when it came to the introduction of submarines. Because you get all of that with submarines and half of the time that you can see them, you still can't attack them. Imagine being in a ship that doesn't actually have any anti-submarine weapons. <laughs> I mean, the kid does have anti-submarine weapons. But hands up everybody who's been maybe, I don't know, six to eight kilometers away from a submarine. The submarine is spotted. You've been pinged, his torpedoes are on the way, but there is nothing you can do about it because he's 20 feet below the water. It's perfectly realistic for 16-inch armor-piercing shells to score citadel hits on armored battleships and cruisers by hitting them 20 feet below the waterline, because that is perfectly realistic. But it is unrealistic for the same shell to do any kind of damage to an unarmored submarine. But of course, Jingles, that's what depth charges are for, you silly man. Yeah? He's just hit that submarine with eight, eight depth charges, and it's not dead. Look, I know this isn't a simulator, I realise it's an arcade game, but come on. On the bright side, he has flipped yet another cap. That's four, all of the caps he's managed to flip. And here comes the Fantasque. But flipping the caps isn't going to win this game. He's still 300 points behind, and as fast as he flips them one way, the enemy team keep flipping them back the other way. The Fantasque is bearing down on him, he launches the torpedoes down the channel, and the submarine still isn't dead yet either. Oh well. Nobody wants to live forever anyway. Chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever. Let's do this. It's bearing straight down on the Fantasque as it turns, probably to get its torpedoes away. It's managed to avoid his, but he's got him. And, yep, dodged the return torpedoes. Now he's spotted. Is that the flint? Or is... No, it's the submarine. Yep, it's the old wargaming hold my vodka design decision. There's the target. You can see him. He can see you. But you can't shoot at him. <laughs> Even though he's in gun range. I mean, you can shoot at him, but you won't do any damage because that's never going to be frustrating. Oh, he's finally come to the surface. Finally, Sig Shellback is allowed to shoot at a spotted target. Well, how very gracious of you, Wargaming. Thank you so much. And there's kill number nine. And that can only be the flint. And that is incredibly bad news. Because it's a flint. And those things are basically designed for killing destroyers. And Sig Shellback does not have an awful lot of health, and he's run out of all of his heals. Even worse, the enemy team have three of the four caps. There's only 40 seconds of this match remaining, so he's not going to be able to win by flipping the caps. And he's not even going to be able to win by torpedoing him, because he's got to wait 30 seconds for his torpedoes to reload, 
and they wouldn't get there in time anyway. So he now has to get into a gunfight with a flint. And he has 30 seconds to win that gunfight. And asking a destroyer on 4,700 health to win a gunfight with a flint in 30 seconds is... Um, <laughs> I think it's asking just a little bit too much. There is a hard limit on just how much carrying one person can possibly be expected to do. Sig Shellback in the USS Kid, scoring eight kills in a battle where nine kills were needed. Clearly, he just wasn't carrying hard enough. Interesting thing about his name, by the way, because a Shellback is the nickname that you give to a sailor who has crossed the equator, which leads me to suspect that Sig Shellback may have been a US Navy signalman. If that is the case, Sig Shellback, if you're watching this video, please do let me know in the comments. Everyone else, please join me in extending my sympathies that he just wasn't able to carry that team hard enough. But hey, at least he was a gentleman about it. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.